The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to another Video Games to the Max, number 176, and I am your host Sean Garmer, and here with me as always, Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. And this is the official Video Games podcast of W2Mnet.com, and we are of course also in partnership with Full1Mania.com and Last Word on Life. And, well... This was the weekend for betas. One of them worked pretty well. The other one did not work so well. Uh, So I guess we might as well start there. There's also a lot of news since looks like we are out of the doldrums and back into we're starting the, the year now. So lots going on. So this might be one of the longer ones, just a warning in case for some reason you haven't seen the time stamp before you hit play. But I guess we should start with the most recent one, the Dragon Ball Z Fighters beta. Uh, yeah, neither uh, one of us obviously pre-ordered. Uh, you know, don't know yet if it's going to show up for review or not. But, you know, we're playing the free open beta portion that started technically yesterday and ever since like 9 a.m failed server failed server failed uh i got in before you did could do the tutorial and that's about it (laughs) yeah the uh well it just takes you know it takes 25 or 20 tries to get into the actual game if not more and just keep hitting x over and over um but the online matchmaking seems to be busted you and i tried to get into a match we were in a lobby by ourselves essentially and we couldn't get into a match uh Uh, but what do you think of the the game as far as i guess just getting to try gameplay with tutorial that was fine like i think i mean it very is a lot like it's a lot like Persona uh, Arena or Persona 4 Arena, um, or like Guilty Gear actually, because I mean it's the same engine as Guilty Gear. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yes, like four, but like basically three button fighting game, uh, like low, medium, uh, heavy, and one button for like key blasts and. Like, you still have the kind of the same weird, like, combo breaker that Guilty Gear or Persona 4 had. And, yeah, it looks great. I mean, I mean, it looks like it looks better than the anime, actually. Yeah, the graphics look really good. Uh, I even like the little chibi characters that you get to control yeah, like in the, the lobby. Um, well, Persona, uh, Guilty Gear, Zerd had that. Like, you could make a character and then you had a th- I assume this will have it also that you can fish for like costumes or like new parts for your character so I assume in, like that lobby was pretty big but only two areas were open like but there were four or five areas that were closed off so you have right. to imagine in that lobby that they'll have something like much more substantial planned out for the for the real game Oh yeah, I'd assume so. There's there's got to be other modes there that you know you're not getting to see. Uh, they went for the less is more approach, certainly, uh, which may have bit them in the backside, I think, in that way. Uh, whereas the Dissidia Final Fantasy one pretty much showed you the whole game, just 
it's locked, you know, the stuff that they didn't want you to be able to play yet was locked off. Uh, of course, they have a little bit more time before that game comes out. Uh, they come they come out basically four days apart from each other. So it's not like, you know, too much is going to make a difference there. But uh, the city will basically let you see everything. You can play offline and online, which that might have been something that maybe Bandai Namco could have thought about, was letting you play offline to at least let you experience some battles or whatever without it being in the, the tutorial portion. But, I mean, you do still get to battle them. So, like, after you get done with whatever tutorial thing, it always tells you, go ahead and finish the fight. And then, the, even though the computer's a lot of times is not... It's brain like, dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are times where they actually try to <clears throat> hurt you. But a lot of times, you know, they're there to make it easier on you to do the moves. So... You know, I, I don't know why they didn't choose that option to at least let you play offline, but, uh, you but know. I mean, who knows? I, like, I think this was more this is more of a stress test. I mean, it's not like you could play, you didn't play it, but you couldn't play Monster, Monster Hunter World offline. Well, I think they do. They let you play, oh, no, no, it's, they let you play by yourself, yeah. or you can play with people. So... Um, which is still different, you know, you can either have AI companions or you can have the, the people actually playing with you, but I, I think it's going to be fine. I'm not a fighting game person, so then not really, well, you know, I mean, ultimately, even if it was just a training mode, I had far more fun with Dragon Ball than Dissidia. <laughs> I don't know. I've played it more times after that and I, I started having fun with it. I think it just depends on. If you get better at it, it, it gets more fun. It just... Yeah, I mean, when you get playing with people that... Online, with people that uh, know what they're doing... It can end really quick and it takes the fun away. I, I don't know, when I played against the uh, AI... I, and I felt like I was starting to learn... It, it became a better game for me. I, I think this, like... The problem with City Online with us was like, for, on my end, it was pretty laggy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I attack someone, but they'd already be like away, and it's like no, they were like the game just froze for a second, and uh, now they're like half the screen away, and I'm like this isn't fun. <laughs> or I'll just get like stun locked into the wall, or I'd get I'd attack someone, or they'd attack me, I should say. I get hit in the wall, and I try to get up, and they just like keep beating on me and I couldn't defend against that at all yeah and it sucks because it's like an invisible wall too <laughs> like yeah it's like not even you can see the wall coming or anything it's like oh well this is where the level ends so here's a wall and you're yeah. about to get and not only can you like one person they can knock all three of you into the wall and then knock you all out at once because uh, yep. that happened to us. We, we had a match that ended in like five, like about, I want to say like two minutes, literally, because everybody got knocked against the wall and they, everybody got incapacitated. Like, you know, it's, I was like, damn, okay. Uh, that was also probably the only way we won that one was because you knocked a couple of guys into the wall too. Yeah. Like it, it I guess I think the city might play better as a single player game, but I think like between the two, I think Guilty Gear or not Guilty Gear, sorry, uh, Dragon Ball will have like far more legs on it or more of like a long tail than the city will. I don't want to like cast dispersions on it yet, just because you know so even don't... when the three of us play with Stephanie we're also still kind of learning. So if we all knew what we were doing, perhaps it's a different thing for us, you know? Uh, Besides, we all know Dragon Ball is a better game, better franchise than Final Fantasy. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, it, I think Dragon Ball has a longer history of sucky games than Final Fantasy does. But, you know, Apparently if you want to talk Final about Fantasy. films... 
thirteen two is still really good to me. The other two, thirteen's uh, fine. It's just really really linear. And then by the time you get to the open world part, you're kind of like, okay, could have just made the whole game linear. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, but I I mean if for what it is, right? Like, um, I I have videos of all the cutscene clips that are in the game. I think that's gonna be cool as far as the story mode goes. Like getting to see all those characters together, uh, what the story is gonna be. Like you said. I think it does play in a better way against the AI, but well, again, yeah, the AI is just, dumb. yeah. the, the AI is just dumber and not like not as cheap, so that helps. Uh, they're not as cheap, but when you get like onto the gold or platinum, it, it gets kind of hard. <laughs> like I was, they were incapacitating me a lot faster than like never getting incapacitated when. It was silver or bronze, so uh, it does get harder, but yeah, I, I mean, both of the games are flashy, you know, all that. I just think the way that uh, Final, the Dissidia is set up, I think it's the barrier to entry is easier, but, well, you, think, you know, if you're a fighting game fan, DBZ is going to appeal to you because it's, you know. You think, you think Dissidia is easier than Dragon Ball? I think as far as when you're going competitively against somebody, because like, there's less Dragon, buttons you got to press, yeah. Dragon Ball literally has an auto combo system. You just keep matching square and you can win. <laughs> well, yeah, but if you want to actually do the big, like trying to memorize the whole going down up whatever thing is still a pain <laughs> to me. I was able to get it. Uh, I think easier than like say Street Fighter or whatever, but um, I, I, I would. Through, I played through this uh, Dissidious tutorial, and I'm still not 100 percent sure of what every button does, or you know. There's only like three buttons. <laughs> it's triangles, X, and square. And then guarding, and then evading. And the then guarding is. I would say the guarding is annoying because it's like it shows up and then. A lot of times you're not even sure if you can guard something. I yeah. Whereas like DBZ, you just press the the D pad well, back or yeah. And, yeah. Like Dragon Ball is essentially Street Fighter, which everyone has played who's ever played a video game has played Street Fighter Two. Like Dissidia is a, a re, it's a 3D arena fighter, but it has a lot of obtuse systems like the old Dissidia games. That well, I no mean, I don't think. Like, the, like no are you gonna expect them to change much anymore. from the old Studio games, though? I mean, well, th those games were made on a platform that was very limited. Like, of course, they were gonna play kind of fucked up. Yeah. Like this game, like the like the, uh, when you cycle through, uh, targets is just like baffling. Uh, or, like the way you, or like the way you activate your like special your EX moves, you have to hold triangle and then press up or down in the analog stick. It's like, who, who, who thought of this? Like, why not just use the fucking D pad? Your D -pad yeah, I don't know like, why you're putting the chat on the stupid D pad. Like to say that like the city is like more approachable is like crazy talk. <laughs> yeah, you're not eh, thinking about it. Yeah. That that dash, I still think that that dash button is going to get overkilled on uh, DBZ a lot. <laughs> you basically get what? to do like a 25 hit combo without even doing anything. Yeah, but you just block <laughs> and counter. Like, yeah, it's, no, I'm, I know, I, I know what you're saying is that it's still going to get like, and then you also have to use that. That's what made it difficult for me is like, okay, if you're, you also have to use that button to do the big super move. And it's like, well, how do I know when it's doing the super move and then when it's trying to do just the regular dash? The so, only, I mean, for me, the only really weird part of Dragon Ball uh, is like getting the actual Dragon Balls, because one of the tutorials is like get the one star Dragon Ball, 
and the tutorial like tip was like just keep mashing square and I hit the guy a bunch and like the number four star Dragon Ball dropped out and I and I kept doing it over and over and like finally I just had to look online for a guy and, and the guy was basically like yeah just keep mashing square until the third guy shows up cause it's random and, yeah it's like that's like that's a weird system to me but that's not like game like that's not like very game changing it's just kind of like they're. Well, what is it like a super super attack or something where the dragon comes no, out? No, Sh- Shenron comes out and basically is like, "I'll grant your wish," and you can choose between four different options. You can have health regen. Uh, I don't know. I think it's a period of invincibility for like a short while. Uh, he'll bring back another of your. He'll bring back a dead character if you want, or he'll grant you another one of those like combo breaker things. That increases your, like, it's basically like the X Factor from, like, Ultimate Mar- on Marvel's Capcom 3 or something. Oh, okay, because I got down to where all I needed was to get the, I got all the other Dragon Balls except for the one star, and it was about to come out, I guess, because it comes out after you do, like, a six combo, yeah. and I killed the last guy, and I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> whatever. I mean, I, I created, if you saw the video, I created, like, it shows that. Like, the second fight is me summoning Shenron for a second. But, yeah, I just keep hitting. Like, that's a system to me that just feels, like, very strange. Because I don't mind it being random, but the amount of damage you have to inflict on the other opponent to, like, get the Dragon Ball to come out. Like, why summon it? Because at that point... Yeah, they're pretty like, much almost going to be dead. Uh, unless the, I, the conceit is, like... That meter, that Dragon Ball, like, the Dragon Balls work for both characters. Like, if I hit, like, another opponent, if I hit hit the enemy for seven hits, and a Dragon Ball pops out, and he hits me for seven hits, and another one pops out, like, whoever gets... Well, it it does. Yeah. You never had the computer hit you enough to where it comes out for them? No. (laughs) Yeah, see, that happened to me, and uh, the Dragon Ball popped out, and it went to their little set of... Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It's still a thing, like, where... I guess you would have to be in a really, really, like, tough battle or something. Uh, And does it go to, like, the person that got the most Dragon Balls then at that point? Like, so... No, I I imagine it's, like, the Dragon Ball meter is full. And then to summon it, you also have to have a level 7 or a maxed out super meter. Oh, okay. So you have to power up and then do the combo again, and then you'll summon them. Fair enough, then. But, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you like the city, obviously, but I like Dragon Ball a lot more. Never no, I, 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 I don't have a, I don't have a problem with Dragon Ball at all. I think as a game, it's going to be good. The fighting system is fine. It, it, you can get into it. I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, to go into the tutorial, so uh, if I liked fighting games, I think DBZ would be one of those I'm picking up, plus you get the Marvel vs. Capcom part of it with where you get the three fighters, so... uh, Yeah, that was another odd system where uh, you had to pick a team to start off with. mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, other games have done that, sure, but it just felt kind of weird. Did you ever get the third person to come out? Because I always, like, so I had the team with the Goku, Krillin, and well, that's, Gohan. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the training team. I think you, everyone starts out. Yeah, you just have to hit L2. L2 oh, it's L2. Like, okay, because I kept hitting L1. I was like, okay, if I do barely touch L1, he does the where he comes in for a second. If I press yeah, just yeah. L1, Krillin comes in. It's you have to If you press it for a second, like, the character comes in for a second to do like an attack but if you hold it for like two seconds and they come in for like then they tr- then they team like team out tag out yeah I, I like the whole thing you can force the guy to, to you can force the other team to get, knock that guy out too that was uh, pretty interesting yeah that, that's been in like my past Marvel vs. Capcom games so well yeah I mean it looks like that's going to be the game that everybody's been wanting from DBZ for a while, so, and it's 
out in about nine days or so. Hopefully, they don't have the server problems on the actual game that are we're in this beta, but we'll see how that goes. Well, it's, fu it's funny. I, I sent a friend of mine that video, like, just like two gameplay matches, and she's like, what makes this different than like other Dragon Ball games? And I'm like, well, it's good for one. <laughs> and it's like a, just a 2D fighting game. Like there's no flying around and like none of the really weird shit. And she was like, well, I like flying around. I'm like, no, because that always fucks up Dragon Ball. <laughs> No, you really don't, because it makes it harder. You like you're never, all you're doing is evading half the time. Well, the problem with like I told her the problem with problem with that stuff is the camera can't the characters move too quickly for the camera to like follow. Mm -hmm. Like that was a problem with Xenoverse, and like that's a problem with like most 3D so Sonic the Hedgehog games too. It's like the camera's just not built in a way to like let you control the character because he's moving too fast. Yeah, unless you like the helicopter camera that goes yeah. in circles. <laughs> that's pretty much what you're going to get. I, which that's what that also happens in a city too where you're you're knocked out and you're like literally disoriented and I'm just kind of like, "Okay, there went my character. I'll see if I can get up." <laughs> it's Yeah, I, it's that's just gonna take getting used to. I like it to the fact of just what it is, um, but yeah, I, I don't know I'm glad I'm not the one reviewing it because <laughs> I would be kind of upset with it after a while. Plus, Stephanie's way better at it than uh, both of our, you know, both of us are. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, the city of that beta is gonna be there till the 21st. So if for some reason you're listening to this and you have not played that yet, just download it. Uh, they actually change out the characters later today, so I don't know if they're going to do a complete swap or if they're going to put in like five different ones or whatever, but they have enough to where they could just do the whole other 15 if they want to. Yeah, because even when we were fight, even like the single player, like the offline mode, like if you're fighting against characters that aren't in the beta necessarily, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Noct and... Oh, there's a couple other ones I couldn't... And isn't Kefka in it? You can... Yeah, Kefka... You can't play as Kefka or Sephiroth in uh, the beta. The, the current, yeah, the current beta. Yeah. But maybe in the revised one you might be able to, or... Yeah, I'm sure when they do the character swap that they'll probably just switch all those all those guys out so that you can play with them too. I mean... Which, the other thing is, is, though, is, like, that game has been out for a while in Japan and arcades. I kind of, I'm not sure how much... It came out in Japan on the 11th. No, I mean the so. arcade game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's been out for at least a year. So, I'm not really sure how much balancing will need to be done further. Uh, I, I did find it interesting that, like, if you flip over to the arcade version with the HUD, like, there's so much more stuff going on, it's like, okay, I don't need any more on my screen, there's already enough yeah. stuff on the screen, uh, I mean, yeah, I just looked, the arcade game came out three years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's kind of a while, <laughs> I, I just also, noticed when I was playing before we started that if you look at the characters, it tells you who you're targeting, I was like, wow, yeah. I wish I would have known that earlier. I realize it's not the same company at all, but I kind of got like a Pokin vibe from Dissidia. Yeah, that's there. And it's ironic because Bandai Namco is the one who does Pokin, not, not yeah, Team not Ninja. Team Ninja or Koi Tecmo. <laughs> this it also has a Dynasty Warriors type vibe to it too. So. It's going to be interesting when those games come out, which one does better and everything. But it, it really feels like the DBZ, er, everything I see is all the DBZ fans are like just rabid for this game. So hopefully it does well for, for Bandai and Amco there. But yeah, uh, anything I, else? Well, I don't know. I was going to say that the first time I got in the beta, I had a friend of mine who's a what kind of is like a big DBZ fan, like he watched me play for like 15 minutes, he's like, I'm going to buy this. 
There you go. Uh, let's see. Other games. Uh, WoW, still. You know, I'll be probably playing that for the next year. <laughs> like, <laughs> off and on. Uh, the only other thing is, like, I reinstalled American Truck Simulator. <laughs> hey, there you go. How's, yeah, uh... Go on. How's that going? It's fine. Uh, I my old save game is gone, so I had to start a new game. And also, uh, they added like achievements since I last played, <laughs> which is kind of nice. There you go. Got a reason to go through it again. But yeah, it's I mean it's always a relaxing game, so that's nice. And aside from that, I haven't been playing that much. Like I've. There's not that much out that I kind of want to like mess with right now. I mean, there's stuff I'd like to like play, like Wolfenstein 2 or something, but I doubt I'll ever get to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that kind of always goes on a sale, and if not, it'll just go down in price pretty quickly, I'm sure, to where you'll maybe get to buy it. Yeah, like, I, the, the one thing I probably want to grab is Dead Cells when I can, because I, I saw a video of that recently, it looked pretty, pretty interesting. Heard a lot of people talk great things about that game, so... Would, uh, would not be surprised on that front. Uh, finally got to play Nier. Played, like, the first 30 minutes or so. Still haven't played past the, where I died in the, where you fight the two big wheels or whatever. Um, yeah, and that, that's not even... That's like half the way through that intro that sequence. That starting still area? Like three, yeah, I still got like three or four more bosses. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, well, that's something for me to do probably on like Tuesday or something. Well, like the, the new boss... The other bosses in that area are like... They're all like the shooting bosses from like that... So you're, I don't think you like, have to do any, like, any more game, like, sword play. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, because I, I would switch between the shooting and the the hitting them with the blade. Um, yeah. So it, I like the, the gameplay. It's it's fun, and, I mean, I like the, the setting anyway and the, the characters, so... We'll see. I don't understand the whole hating on the outfit thing. I think it looks kind of cool for a 2B, but, you know, it is what it is. People want to complain about stuff, it feels like. Yeah, uh, I never found her outfit, like, overly sexualized. Like, I guess it's, it's, like, somewhat revealing, but not any more so than, like, Bayonetta. So that was, like, the whole conceit of the game was, like, she's literally stripping down as her combo gets bigger. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they could have easily put in, like, the whole, oh, her outfit breaks when she gets hit or something, and they didn't do that, so, I mean. The only, I mean, there is there is one part of that, like, I guess if you, like, destruct the character, her, like, dress blows away or something, but I didn't realize that until, like, I already finished the game, like, I didn't even know that was in there. <laughs> or that achievement that if, like, do you, like, see if her, like, uh, have her skirt blow up or something or what it is well it's like, like looking up her skirt under like, yeah. on a ladder or something but like, like i never did that so it was like okay i mean it's a dumb achievement and should it be in there no but it's like really if you're that sad that you're going around wanting to really look for that achievement and it's not because you you want to get all the achievements and you know Whatever floats your boat there. I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to play that. Uh, also been playing the Digimon Cyber Sleuth game because the uh, new one's about to come out. Hopefully that one shows up for review because I really enjoyed the first Cyber Sleuth. Way better than whatever the hell that was last year with the next order. That was atrocious last year. Uh, but this game kind of... It follows a little the poke the Pokemon formula without having to catch the Pokemon. You just scan them when they show up, and then once you fight them a bunch of times, you'll get the ability to like have them be in your party, and then 
you can digivolve them and you can put them on a farm and they gain levels for you so you don't have to like build up everybody and you can actually have fun trying to figure out cuz each one of them have like four or five different you know evolutions so you can actually play around and either go with the ones from the show or have them go to totally different things and uh the story is kind of interesting the stuff with going around the world hopefully that gets kind of branched out a bit because it's very very like blocked off and almost kind of gets tedious sometimes because it's like all right i can't really go too far but this is also kind of just Sometimes you don't really get direction on where you're supposed to go, and you're just like going around in circles till you find the 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 guy with the, the exclamation point on his head, and then oh, okay, so let's talk to this guy so I can get the quest or whatever, and hopefully they fix some of the quality of life stuff. But it it's a it's a pretty good game actually, probably one of the. I mean, I know Digimon doesn't have this great history of games or whatever, but probably actually one of the better ones to ever come out for that series and our Digimon game (laughs) I mean it's there's not like there's a lot that you really want to go out there like the the Super Smash Brothers copy the Rumble Arena games those were good and I think one of the ones on PS1 might have been good but the other ones are bad so yeah. it's fine. Uh, the first game that we have for review as a site for the year, Super Meat Boy on the Switch. Uh, it's Super Meat Boy, basically. Um, the same one you've been playing for all these years, except for it has a two-player race mode. That's literally the only thing that's new on it. Uh, but I actually never played Super Meat Boy until I played it on Switch. And it... Uh, you know, everybody thinks Cuphead is hard. You know, this game was out there before then, putting your uh, fingers to a hurt right now. I'm, I'm at, like, World 4. It took me forever to get to... It took me, like, an hour and a half to get the world, get through all of World 3 to World 4. So, yeah, that was a lot of dying. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. And I, li- I like the, like, cartoony aesthetic of it. And takes a lot of stuff from different platformers, uh, which is nice. And uh, I like hearing that apparently in like three days they've already sold very similar to the same amount that they sold on 360 when it launched almost eight years ago. So, man, doesn't matter what comes out on the Switch, people are buying it. That's It's still amazing to me that, you know, when we talk about the Nintendo Direct and everything... I don't want the Switch to be, uh, you know, port central, but I don't think you can really, you know, blame them for doing it because all these games are coming out on it and they're selling. So, like, Shovel Knight, of course, it helps that it's like the whole collection, basically. When it came out on the Switch, uh, it sold better than any of the other versions, just from its launch alone the wonder boy dragons trap forma 8 those all sold uh better death squared uh which we actually have a review for on the site on pc in three days sold more than all the other platforms it's on combined and i think there's um there was another game that sold like 10 times more on the Switch than it did on any other system it's on. So, it's, uh, it's, I just think it's crazy. Like, you know, people complain about, oh, I, you know, they were having all these great games come out and even the indie games were, were selling like hotcakes. So, I don't know how long they're going to be able to keep that up, but. Well, just imagine, just imagine if they could port GTA Five to the Switch. <clears throat> I I bet that's why Rockstar is highly considering it, <laughs> because you know, I wonder if they, you know, if if they reconsider on Red Dead Two at some point, and 
you know, that comes out on there and how much it would sell. But, yeah, the gimmick is strong right now. So take advantage of it while you can. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much it for me. I've been able to play a lot more uh, right now while I have my days free. But uh, let's go ahead and get this awful story that I wish we didn't have to talk about out of the way. Uh, but it doesn't, it, it should be talked about because it's, you know, there's already a lot about, a lot of uh, companies are trying to change that whole aspect of the crunch and seeing how they can go about trying to, to diminish that. Uh, because that's come under fire a lot about how it overworks the employees and then basically you're overworking employees to the bone and then firing a lot of them. So they're trying to find a way to, you know, where that's lessened so you don't have that happening all at once and it's more just leveled out throughout the process of making the game. But uh, this is not uh, just about overworking employees. Uh, this, of course, refers to Quantic Dream. And having French outlets come out and talk about the uh, the two guys here responsible in uh, Guillaume, Guillaume de Fondimier and David Cage. I'm sorry if I said that completely wrong, but <laughs> try to say a, a really French name. Yeah, that was a Spanish pronunciation of a French name. <laughs> eh. Close enough, but uh, they are accused. Uh, some former workers uh, sent out emails and told these different French outlets. I showed up on Eurogamer first, and then Kotaku got a hold of it, and everybody else. And uh, it's, they're accusing them of inappropriate behavior, sexist and homophobic jokes, and a toxic work environment. A lot of it comes from 600 different Photoshop images that show various employees in homophobic or sexist nature, and that's with 83% of the workforce being guys, and they're even shown with uh, Nazi symbols and everything else. Uh, like, you know, I, this guy doesn't seem like Especially David Cage just doesn't seem like he's, I don't know, he might think it's funny or, or whatever. Like the whole thing where he's, a burglary happens at the place and he's asking somebody who's of Tunisian descent, hey, is that your cousin? Like, I know that's sort of a joke people say, but you got to worry about like, he he apparently is obviously not. Corporate, I guess. He's not very refined in how he acts or being a leader in the workplace, I guess. Yeah, but it's, I imagine it's slightly different in France, like the cultural taboos. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, like, the guy, I mean, the guy's weird to begin with, so, like, this doesn't particularly surprise me. <laughs> No, it's not. I mean, and then the most, the funniest thing of it, the whole thing where he gets his retort to the people that, where he's saying that this is all absurd. Do you want to talk about homophobia? I work with Ellen Page, who fights for LGBT rights. And you want to talk about racism? I work with Jesse Williams, who fights for civil rights. Uh... Did you forget about the part where you put in a nude model of her without her permission? Or is that just something that you thought was okay? So it, yeah, like, didn't didn't she almost like almost sue them at some point? <laughs> yeah, she almost sued Sony for it. Yeah. Like it, you know, she bl she blatantly told you I did not want to film nude and then you went and found somebody that looks like her to put in the game anyway. And then, you know, you passed around other photos and, and all that stuff. Like, also, do you not have a PR person or an HR person in your office to, like, speak for you? So you don't say dumb crap? Is that also yeah, not? It's, it's like the Peter Molyneux, like, thing. <sighs> it's 
sometimes you just gotta like he's he's hurting himself the more he talks basically is what I feel like sure but I mean this could be all a blow up and it's getting overblown right like they could have made this a worse thing than it was but he's not helping himself I don't know, do you I, think this really happened? I mean, there's like the, workplaces commonly have like a like a FTP drive or like you know some repository of like internet videos or you know stupid shit like that. Like that wouldn't necessarily surprise me, honestly, if they did. But I mean, who can say? Yeah, I mean, but making photoshops of employees is a little I mean, bit different. Just, it's dumb college humor. It's like dumb, dumb like college humor stuff, though. I agree with you, in that it's really stupid. But you know, I get it. Also, that they probably there's probably downtime there where, you know, there's think they run out of stuff to do, and you're trying to amuse yourself to keep yourself sane and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. Just, there's times like, where I, I always think about the uh, Brad Wardell situation with Stardock. Like an ex-employee, is, I think sued like the company and him specifically for I want to say like a hostile workplace or uh, yeah, a hostile environment and sexual harassment. And it turns out like she kind of made the whole thing up. That's that's really bad. Like, so like, also it's like she stole a bunch of shit when she left. <laughs> so like oh. the cases were dropped and she had like publicly apologized for it. <laughs> Hopefully that is a anomaly and not the norm. But I mean, look, it, I think this stuff needs to be talked about. I think the people that are mad that this is a story or whatever like the whole thing with the crunch deal and all that and being overworked is a real thing and more of it needs to be discussed because look these developers are th- those those workers are the ones that are helping make this game and they're over getting overworked and all this stuff's happening and especially if there's any kind of harassment or whatever right now this is this is the deal Like, all this stuff's going to come out, and, you know, this is going to keep being a thing in 2018, so, you know, might as well just get used to it at this point. Not get used to it, it's a good thing, I'm just saying you might as well realize that these stories are going to come out more and more because it is now a thing where everybody feels like, okay, I can come out and talk now, you know. Uh, yep. Cease and Sorry got was the next celebrity to get whacked with a uh, harassment thing. I mean, this is just going to keep being something. Uh, it's getting kind of scary sometimes. Uh, you know, like how people can talk to each other. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this I I I just think overall this is a good thing. Like, so we can stop having these problems at workplaces. Um. But you know, sometimes, like how quickly the whole innocent until proven guilty thing becomes the other way around is a little bit discouraging. Also. Yeah. Like, don't you think? Like, it's like a lot of times. That person doesn't even get to come out and defend themselves. It's just immediate. All right, that person did it. Let's not even wait till to see what they say or anything. Just that's it. You know, and they get fired from whatever thing they're doing, and that you know, they get ostracized before they even get to comment. And you know, it, all it takes is for a couple of these to be just completely wrong and. We're going to start wondering what's going on here. 
But all right, let's get off this. Uh, I hate having to talk about these things, but they 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 have it. Uh, dice. You know, last week we talked about awards. Uh, which was it? The who had the awards first? Wasn't it Game Developers Conference? Yeah. Okay. It's Game Developers uh, Choice Awards, and now this time it's the Dice Awards. I erased a few of these that like for stuff we never talk about on here, just to shorten this whole uh, deal. But we're gonna go through this. Not not all of it. Uh, some of this stuff like surprises the crap out of me. But it's like okay, I feel like both these things for the art. It's gonna be Cuphead, but Cuphead uh, for Honor getting a anything is surprising to me. Cuphead for Honor, Hellblade, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Uncharted Lost Legacy for achievement and animation. Uh, Cuphead. <laughs> Cuphead's gonna win, right? I mean, yeah, so so it certainly is gonna be for Honor. <laughs> That just surprises the crap out of me. For honor being on anything, uh, it's that, cheap yeah, in that it all. I really forgot about honestly. Like it's, it reminds me a lot of like the division. <laughs> well, I mean, they kept, you know, doing stuff with it, and they kept adding content to it. But it's like it got really maligned, and then like the people that stuck with it were just really hardcore into it, and that was about it. It always seemed like a, it should have been like a cheaper game, like not a sixty dollar game to play, you know. That too. Or to buy. Because it was mainly multiplayer focused. Yeah. And. Well, you know, Ubisoft's got to make that money. Uh, art direction: Cuphead, Hellblade, Horizon, Little Nightmares, and Breath of the Wild. I could see Zelda taking it, um, but I feel like Cuphead still wins this. Yeah, probably. Outstanding character, basically. Uh, Bayek, Senua from Hellblade, Aloy, Inden Verso Verso from Star Uh, Wars Battlefront 2. I think it's Aiden Verso. Oh. Not bad. Uh, Those characters have really stupid names. <laughs> you and it's, it's, it's very close. Like, her character's name is Aiden Verso. It's... What's the character's name from Rogue One? Isn't it Jin Erso? Yeah. It's like, how close can these two characters' names be together? Not really. Uh, I would vote for Aloy. I'd probably say Bayek, honestly. Like, I have a lot of problems with that game. I don't, like, his character works the most. I I wouldn't say, like, Chloe Frazier is kind of a weird one on that list because it's a returning character. <laughs> yeah. I was, she got to star in her own game, so I guess they're giving her uh, props for that, or... Uh, outstanding achievement in original music composition: Call of Duty, World War II, Cuphead, Horizon, Rhyme, and Wolfenstein 2. Some weird choices here. <laughs> I would vote for Cuphead personally. I really like that soundtrack. Yeah, like I wouldn't. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't. I'm surprised. Really like, like Persona's much. not here. Yeah, I'd say Persona or Nier, like, kind of fuck or, Call of Duty 2 or maybe Rhyme. Like, like what is... I guess they're going for, like, the atmospheric stuff or whatever. I don't know, but... Like, okay. Uh, Destiny 2 and Justice 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Super Mario Odyssey, and Uncharted Lost Legacy for sound design. Like, okay? Uh, Mario Odyssey is the only one... To, I personally have played in that entire list, so I don't That's, know. I I mean, I guess I played in Justice, but I wouldn't. I don't really care about the sound design of that game. Yeah, like I don't think about that really. Like honestly, in... like honestly for that thing, like 
I would say Hellblade would be like a lock for that one, but it's not even exactly. Nominated. I mean, when you sit there and make that making of, and all you can think about is like, damn, they really did a lot to make the sound work in that game, and nothing like that. And like Nier gets nothing in a lot of these things. Like I'm just like, what are these people thinking here? Uh, these I really can't argue with. All five of these, maybe Horizon not, but I've heard a lot of people really enjoy the story in Horizon. Hellblade and Night in the Woods, Edith Finch and Wolfenstein 2 and Horizon for story. Uh, I probably enjoyed... Wolfenstein 2 is the most out of the, those five. I haven't played either fence, so can't comment I'd there. I'd say Wolfenstein. But... I think that, let's see, the problem with this list, honestly, is I think you have to pay to get into DICE. Oh. So I don't think near, or I don't think, like, uh, Platinum Games, or, I mean, Square is probably a part of DICE. Or Atlas. Games. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I understand what this... Because some of these just make no sense whatsoever to me. Because I remember... I think it was... I want to say 2000... I want to say 2008. Let me see if I can... Uh, yeah, 2008. They had a best fighting game category. And that was when Street Fighter... Uh, that was when Street Fighter 4 came out. And Street Fighter 4 was nominated for best fighting game in 2008. For DICE. And the reason is just Capcom wasn't a part of DICE. And it's like, what other fucking fighting game came out in 2008 that people gave a shit about? No, nothing. <laughs> this, is a, this is a fighting game that brought the, like, the, the genre back. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Action game of the year, Call of Duty Cuphead, Destiny 2, PUBG, and Wolfenstein. That's a hard list to pick from. Uh, since Cuphead's not nominated for any of the other ones, I'd say Cuphead. Uh, Wolfenstein 2 could easily win there. PUBG. I'd say Wolfenstein or probably PUBG. Like, again, Call of Duty World War 2, no. Like, it's not, not an action game. <laughs> I mean, oh, well, they don't have shooting as a genre, so... It's just a bad one. But, you know, it again, they, they pay to be in this, I guess. Like, Assassin's Creed, Horizon, Mario, Zelda, and Uncharted. That's a pretty fair list for adventure game. Zelda is going to win something. I mean, Zelda probably won most things. <laughs> well, they gave Horizon, I think, has the most... Out of any, all these awards, or out of all the things on dice here, so. Uh, yeah, I'd say Zelda for this. Uh, the one that made me, like, kind of just. Oh, Nier gets it. Nier does get in for role playing game, but you also put in Middle Earth Shadow of War and Torment Tides of Numenera in here along with Persona 5 and Divinity Original Sin 2 uh shit I mean Shadow <laughs> War belongs on no one's list <laughs> <laughs> and I, I me and Adam both ran into huge problems with Torment like I'm I'm sure that game's fine I wouldn't know I wasn't able to fucking play it on my PS4 because it was <laughs> I, like the frame rate I, and, like, I remember yeah. watching you and I'm just like, do you know, do you even know what's going on? Because I don't know how you can see anything. Yeah. And I remember, like, I think in Adam, he had the Xbox One version. It wouldn't even boot on his console for some reason. Like, he got into character creator. It would just lock up. Wow. So this is not a great, great game at all. <laughs> uh, I've got Persona 5 should win that, I'd hope. I, I wouldn't, I guess... I mean, I guess near. I we just wouldn't call it an RPG. Yeah, I think of it up, as an action game. You level up, and you have like side quests, but it's not like, uh, you know, I wouldn't. 
like Divinity is an RPG. Persona Five is an RPG. Right. To call to call it like an RPG, you'd be calling like Zelda Breath of the Wild an RPG. It's like well, some people do. No. <laughs> yeah, I I don't agree with that either. I don't think it's an RPG, but you know they wanted to find a category to put it in. I guess. So. Uh, game of the year. They have Cuphead, Horizon, PUBG, Mario Odyssey, and Zelda. I can't argue with either five of those, really. Uh, I I could see Zelda just winning this. For just overall game of the year? Yeah. Or, yeah, probably Zelda or Mario. I mean, honestly, any of those could win. Just depends on the whatever they decide there on the dice, but you can actually, I don't know if you can actually watch the uh, Game Developer's Choice one, but you can watch these on February 22nd on, uh, it gets streamed, so there you go, if you wanted to watch uh, an award ceremony, and probably a bunch of developers and folks there, you can watch it. Uh, so... Let's talk about the Nintendo Direct that dropped on the 11th here. A lot of, uh, aside from Mario Tennis, which I was happy to see Mario Tennis is back, uh, lots of ports coming to the Switch again. Uh, I w- I'm waiting for, uh, fuck Mario Tennis, I'm waiting for Mario Bocce to come out. <laughs> Wait, why? Why not? Or Mario uh, curling? It'll be the most popular game. In, hey, uh, you know if they're doing Canada. a, I don't know if they're doing a Mario and. Well, no, they're not because it would be out by now because Olympics is in like a month. Yeah. I'm surprised they're not. Like you could have a Mario curling. Or Sonic curling. Huh. <laughs> Could you imagine Sonic curling? He just rounds up yeah, on the ball a, and just yeah, that, that hits it. He <laughs> would get knocked into the next uh, arena probably <laughs> if he does it. But uh, I'm I'm excited. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is coming. Uh, that's a really good game. It's hard. So because of it being hard, Funky Kong is being added to basically give you uh, easy mode. Because why not? You can go on a surfboard and avoid things. Did okay. you uh, <laughs> Did you see the, the thing with the balloons for Mario Odyssey? I'm just like, what did Luigi ever do to someone? He gets stuck with the, like... Just lame mode that they had <laughs> to oh. Mario Odyssey. Like the year of Luigi's over. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I mean, you could have just added him as a playable character or something. And no, but we get the balloon mode uh, instead. Uh, World ends with you coming on Switch is freaking awesome. I can. Not wait to play that game again. I loved it on DS, but I didn't get to finish it. Uh, so, awesome that it's coming to Switch. Dark Souls coming to Switch is interesting. Uh, it's going to be in a lesser frame rate than the other systems, but hey, it's portable. So I'm sure I'm sure that'll make Blight Tunnel a joy to get through. <laughs> yeah. Hey, people can, uh, you know, you can curl up on your bed before you sleep and think about dying a like, bunch of times. It's funny, because alongside this, I think, uh, isn't it Bandai Namco makes those games or puts them out? Yes, Bandai Namco, yeah. But uh, they announced, like, their super deluxe Dark Souls, like, trilogy for PS4, and it's, like, $450. Only in Japan. For now. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see if it comes this way, but... I mean, it's not remastered, though. It's the port versions. Yeah, but I sent the link to a friend of mine. He's like, yeah, I'd buy that if I could. I'm not spending $450 on any 
collection of games unless it is like the entire Final Fantasy that I don't think that 30th anniversary collection cost $450. No. I think it was like 300. So jeez. That that is a lot of freaking money. For yeah, me. it's like the three games, it came with okay, it came with like three extra DVDs or something. Cuz there were like more discs in that thing than there should have been. Uh and it, yeah, it came in this like super like cool looking case or whatever, but that was about it. Or it came with a few books or something. Good lord. Uh, Faye is finally gets that February sixteenth release date, which that's a cool indie that I'm sort of excited for. Uh, East eight coming makes sense because they had to redo the translation, and everybody's basically waiting for that game to come out again. Uh, I don't know about that SNK tag team battles thing. I mean, that's cool and all. Well, you don't like and, games, so. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't, but I feel like that's their answer to like the Skullgirls or whatever to have the the all female fighting game. Uh, well, Harvel, like... go ahead. At least SNK has like slightly more recognizable characters. That, yeah, very true. Like, I, can I name, didn't know I who any name, of them were, but uh, I, can, I can name at least one SNK character. Let's say that. Uh Hyrule Warriors coming is cool and all, but I don't know. They feel like they could have picked another Wii U port to bring over. Like what though? Mm-hmm. Like. Or run out of options. Like, I mean, Smash Brothers, obviously, but I don't think they're going to bring that over. I think they're just going to get another one. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if they... Because uh, you only... I mean, at this point, they would have announced it by now, you'd hope. Like... Well, maybe E3, because remember, this whole Direct basically takes you up until May. And then at E3, I assume they're announcing the rest of the year. Yeah. So... But, like, what other Wii U games would you want to come to the Switch? Well, I... Like, I can think of, like, Wonderful 101. Yeah, uh, Wonderful 101, Super... The Smash... I would really love freaking Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Okay, uh, yeah. I mean, the other obvious one is, like, Mario Maker, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't think it would either. Unless they don't plan on making anything else Mario uh, after tennis, which I don't, I, I'm sure we'll see like at least one Mario Party and one Mario Golf, or they might even make a Mario Kart Nine for Switch. You know, since eight deluxe eight deluxe came out so early, uh, so you know. That's going to be the interesting thing, what they do with these, the Wii U game. But yeah, they, like you said, I mean, they're already bringing Yoshi. Uh, they're they're making a Kirby game that's not the Star Allies that they showed. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they are kind of running out of the Wii U ports. But I am bring... game. <laughs> they could. I saw people wanting that. Make, no, I want to make a good Star Fox game again. I've lost hope for that at this point. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, if they don't come out with another Star Wars, Star Fox game, as long as it's not damaging them anymore, I'm fine with it. Uh, They'll finally make a uh, Metroid game on consoles. <laughs> well, they are Metroid Prime Four. Yeah. So, whenever that comes out, uh, in 2019 probably, but it it'll show up at some point. Uh, just to get off the switch, to end it, the Japanese console market actually grew for the first time since 2006, largely because of the switch's sales and the PS4 uh, as well. So, that's a uh, that's good because you know Japanese market's been basically mobile and uh, 
DS for the longest time, so. Well, that's the thing is, like, that's probably why Nintendo made the Switch the way it is, because of Japan. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they also wanted to basically tell you, okay, here was the, what the Wii U should have been, and now we got it right after making you sit through that system you didn't really want. Yeah. So what did you think about this, which to me is basically like the same system they already had before on the 360, but so there's possibility of a new Xbox achievement system, which they're calling career. And it's basically there so that you get loot boxes for your avatars, like getting clothes and stuff like that. And then you get like your gamer score is going to be affected more by doing quests and playing certain games and you're going to benefit from playing a game longer and I don't know so what else they're going to come up with here but if you just set the game idle for 60 hours you get all the uh, you get all the loot boxes <laughs> <laughs> yeah where you get all the I like, mean, okay. Th- this theoretically sounds like a neat idea, but I just think about, well, first of all, this is all stuff for, like, the Avatar stuff, which right. seems to be, I mean, I haven't, I've never, never actually played it through uh, Xbox One, but that system seems to be completely gone. They're like, bringing it back. That's Yeah, but, like, that's yeah. the thing. It never should have gone away in the first place. <laughs> Oh, I agree. And, I like the avatars on the 360 when they brought them out. And like Windows 10 has it, that you can view your avatar somehow, like from the Xbox app. But it's like, who, like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and I also, think it's but, a neat thing, but it's like coming out like you just came out with the Xbox One X. How much longer? Are we really going to have, what, like two more years, like maybe 2019 before we're already hearing, and we're already hearing about PS5 or whatever. So, like, how much longer is this where this is really going to be a thing that really is worth it? I, I, you know, I guess you could always well, institute it now so that whenever you have Xbox 2 or whatever you're going to call that thing, it's there at launch. I mean, I, I imagine the PlayStation 4 will last a while longer because if they want that PlayStation 9 to come out in 2078, then they have a ways to go. <laughs> Why are we... Wait, did somebody say that? No, you don't remember that PlayStation 2 commercial where uh, I'll I'll send you the link on YouTube, but it's like a here's a commercial for, for PlayStation 9, and it's like telepathic user control or like completely like AR experience, and it's like coming in 2078. But then the end of the commercial is like here's the PlayStation 2, like here's the here's like the, the 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 first step in the sequence. <laughs> Okay. But, uh, like, I also think about the system, like, they had this before, not not the loot box stuff, but, like, the Avatar Awards. And that was cool, but only, like, four or five games ever did it. Mm -hmm. I can think, like, Trials Evolution, I think Splinter Cell, I know Red Dead did it for sure, and maybe, maybe one or two games. Like, it was never a big deal. Yeah. And I can't uh, Rock Band adding... did it too. Okay. Yeah. But I can't imagine adding, adding like loot boxes and it's going to make this a, a, a more enjoyable thing. <laughs> like, I, I think about like loot boxes in like WWE 2K18. It's like they hamstrung their creation mode, creation suite by loot boxes. It's like you didn't need, this in the, need these in the first place and now you broke another mode because you added them in. <laughs> <sighs> I think it's okay in that aspect because it like gives you that whole, oh well, maybe I'll get uh, an attire that I've wanted for a while or something. 
And but like that's the thing though. What is gonna be in there? Is it gonna be any of the clothes in the shop randomized, or is it only gonna be the stuff that's not licensed? Uh, like you know, because then you're very limited to the, at that point, and it's not gonna really nobody's really gonna care. But like if I can get literally anything for the avatar, like I bought. For my 360 avatar, I bought some of the sports jerseys and, and whatever. So, like, if that stuff could be in there where I could legitimately get, you know, a Dallas Mavericks jersey for my character because I played a bunch of this game, then cool. If it's, like, hat number 20, I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know? And I'm, I'm assuming that's how most people would feel, like... If this really opens up to where anything that's in the Avatar store can be in those loot boxes, then okay, cool. But if it's only first party stuff, then it's really dumb. Uh, and, and the incentive is sort of taken away. I, I do like the idea of rewarding you for playing a game longer, but if it's all based on time, then, you know... Yeah, People just, are going to find a way to cheat thing. that. Like, how long, how long can I leave my Xbox on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I already do that sometimes on accident. Leave the game on, I start doing something and I forget, and it's been like three hours, and I'm like, oh, well, that added three hours to my play time. That's not a great thing, but all right. So remember that Halo TV show? Nope. I forgot about it. <laughs> Isn't that uh, uh, Luke Cage? <laughs> apparently. Uh, Showtime says that it is very much still in development. And that's pretty much all they say. Like, okay. Yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. <laughs> like, you think they would have come out with another trailer by now? It's... I was thinking of that Halo Nightfall TV show. That's when it's Luke Cage. Or Mike Coulter. That was... Not great either. Yeah. Well, like it's only been almost five years since they announced the the first time. So. I think that the core problem with like a Halo TV show is, well, twofold. One is you're not gonna have the Master Chief in it. Obviously. Uh, but what if you do have Master Chief in it? Then where does it fit in the timeline? Well, they can make it fit in the timeline somewhere. Not really. Like, it'd be, I think it'd just be too hard. And the second problem is, is if you're not going to have the Master Chief in it, you're going to have it filled with a bunch of characters that no one's going to give a shit about. <laughs> that's true, also. You already yeah, had a lot like, of people that didn't like Locke from Five. Yeah, that, that's Mike Coulter. Like, that's the, his character. Or, what are you going to have it, have it with the, uh, o, the ODST troopers? It's like, yeah, I'm sure that'll be great. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're gonna have to find a way to put Master Chief in there because if not, no one cares. Bring the bring the uh, Spartan from Dead or Alive Four back. <laughs> That's exactly what everybody <laughs> wants also, in there. Also, I just don't think Halo would work. I mean, I don't think it would work as a movie, honestly. But I don't think it would work as a TV show because, like, it's hard to create a bad guy. Like, there's no singular bad guy in Halo, necessarily. Uh, it's like groups. Well, it's the Covenant, and they are a bunch of yeah, different species together fighting against humanity. And there are, like, named right. characters in that, but... I don't have well, you got the Flood, too. Yeah. Like, I'd just rather have them make, like, their own, like a, like a different, or just a creative new, like, science fiction marine show. <laughs> what, like Defiant? Or Defiance, or whatever the heck that was? No, good TV show, I should say, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I just remember like, that I mean, thing got a second season, and everybody was like, oh yeah, this is good. No, like, if you just want to make a, sci- like a sci-fi marine like TV show, that's fine, but... I just don't think tying it into the Halo mythology would be good. 
I do think it'd be interesting, you know, if Showtime does end up getting this out there, being on a big, like, premium channel like that, what they can actually do, could the production, you know, work out and all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I just feel like if you don't put Master Chief in there, you're putting yourself in a hole. Yeah, that's going to be just be really hard for people to pay attention to, but you know what? You might just get it to work as a show and I I met, the only the only way that I want the Master Chief to work in that type of show is <clears throat> the end of, like the end of every season, it ends with him taking off his helmet, but you never see his face. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Let's just do it. <laughs> I eh. they could uh, th- yeah, just put, like have smoke show up and just can't see anything, but he took off his helmet. Be excited! It, it, it's always from the back or something like film from the back or something. <laughs> So, I know you played Gravity Rush 2. Yeah. And, of course, the servers were supposed to go down uh, last week, but they have been saved until July 18th. Yeah. I feel like not enough people... I know, I didn't, but like not enough people got to play this game, and so like now when people are learning about it and you know it's on sale and stuff people are getting it and it's a mad rush to get all the online stuff because the, you know I, did you like I, the game I, I like the game plenty i didn't finish it or even get that far into it <clears throat> sorry i think what they'll do i think with this patch or with the delay is, is there is apparently a bunch of stuff you can get from the online store, or, like, from doing crap in the game online that mm. I, I, you know, I suppose you can't get, like, normally. So I'm hoping this patch is, like, just time for them to figure out a way to give every player the, the items, you like, they get. And right. say, here, have it all. Like, that would be the really nice thing for them to do. Because even, even if I went back into it now, I wouldn't know how to get that stuff. I was like, unless I was following a guide pretty closely, and I wouldn't probably want to do that in the first place. Yeah, you would think that they would just so that they can say, okay, we're going to shut down the online server, but here's all your stuff. Yeah. Well, you can get some, I guess you can get like a bunch of furniture for your house or something. And then like a bunch of like gameplay relevant, like upgrades. So that's, I'd consider that useful. (laughs) But isn't that weird though? Like this game just came out. Last year, and you're shutting servers down already. Like, well, I guess it didn't do that well. I mean, I could, I could just said that to begin with. And I, I think about games like Chrome Hounds, which didn't do that well either. I mean, Chrome Hounds lasted longer, but it's not like you can play that game right now. Right. I mean, it's not like you can't play Gravity Rush 2 if they did take the servers down. You just can't play online. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, like... But, uh, apparently, like, look at Mario Maker. Like, that game, it seems, like, pretty fucked up right now on the Wii U because with the Miiverse shut down, like, that game's kind of a disaster. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then on 3DS where you couldn't even do all that stuff. Yeah. It was even worse. So, yep. I mean, they, they took the heart out of the game with the 3DS, so... You know, it, I mean, you would think with Mario Odyssey being out there, it's not that big a deal right now, but I'm sure there are a lot of people that would love to still make levels on Mario Maker, but they can't because of all the crap going on uh, Yeah. with that there. So are you excited for this Assassin's Creed Rogue remaster? Yeah, I, like if, I, if it's cheap enough or if we can get it for review, I'll play it. Like, Rogue's a good game. It has, uh, like, it suffered when it came out because it came out when Unity came out, and that was obviously the game they were more focused on, and that was the one that blew up harder for them. <laughs> so what is, like, it, this is a sequel to Black Flag, right? 
Uh, well, it's actually a prequel to Black Flag. But, oh, it Because it's a prequel, uh, yeah, it's a prequel to, I think it's Black Flag. I don't well, know. This, this is the other one that has the ships and stuff in it, right? Yeah. But it's like you're facing off against... I don't know. I think it is a sequel to Black Flag. Yeah, it is. Because you... Yeah, I don't know the timeline. This, Who knows? <laughs> it's, 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 it's a sequel to Black Flag. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I love the fact that you're like trying to figure it out. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck it. I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah, like, well, Car- like Achilles is in four. He's in three, for sure. He te- he's the one who teaches the three guy. He- he's an old man at that point. Okay. But in this game, but in th- this one, he's like a lot. He's like you know a lot younger. Uh but also this game like ends with. Assassin's Creed Unity essentially happening. Like it ties into that game in like a weird, really weird way. Oh. The last we have to talk about Assassin's Creed Unity. <laughs> like, Rogue's a good game. Like, the only problem, the only real problem with Rogue, and this is one I had with Black Flag also, is it has a really inventive like framework of like you're working at Abstergo. Like, it's like this first person sequence. Or, like, sequences, and you're, like, hacking computers and, like, doing all this inventive shit. And you have no idea who your character is, because they never give you a name. And, like, you don't hear about those characters at all anyway. (laughs) I would say that if you did want to play Assassin's Creed Rogue right now, and not wait till the remaster, you can get it for, like, 20 bucks on Steam. So. Yeah. And I have, well... I have actually two copies of that on PC. (laughs) Not bad. So officially, it is a sequel to Black Flag, a prequel to 3, and a prologue for Unity. Yeah. (laughs) God, that's really convoluted. That's why I was having trouble figuring out where it went in the timeline. (laughs) It is a timeline for like three games, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, but yeah, I guess you know you can complete the story of of those games if you. Uh, and Rogue well, is like I think Rogue is a good game. Like it's it's obviously not my favorite game, but it's probably like top like top seven. Okay, that's that's a pretty good spot there for all those Assassin's Creeds. Like I would say, like Brotherhood, Black Flag, you know, Syndicate are like wait are further up there, but Rogue is good also. <laughs> Not Origins. Uh Origins <laughs> might, might, might be like top eight, like it'd be like my eighth game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Mark was not the biggest fan of Assassin's Creed Origins. <laughs> Well, it's funny because yeah. well, you listen to the, you listen to all the Giant Bomb stuff, right? Over like yes. the game of the year stuff. Because one of the guys from Giant Bomb, uh, Vinny, he's like he was like the Assassin's Creed guy of that website. Like he played them all. He played he played like all the Assassin's Creed two games in like Italian. Wow. Like, that's, I mean, that's cool though because you're listening to it in the uh, original language while you're going around Italy. That, but that's that's a step too far for me. I respect yeah. him. We're doing that, but no. But it's funny because when they were talking about Assassin's Creed, everyone else on the site, or most people during the discussion, were like, "Yeah, this is a good game." And he was like, "He's the same way as me. He's like, this game didn't grab me at all." <laughs> like, I, and he was pretty early playing into it, but he was like, "I, I don't think I like this game." <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the problem we had. Is we had people that really liked the game. And then we had you that did not, and I was like, well, where do we and go with the, this? Ironically, you're, I'm the one who's blurby you for the game. <laughs> well, I put Daniel in there as well. Yeah. Daniel ended up writing something, so it's like, this is really weird, because it's number nine, and Mark's in here just ripping in a new one. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, this is weird. People are not going to understand this at all, but... 
Well, it's that's fine. why I think like our rating system was a tad off because I think more weight should have been given to like it should have been more of a weighted system. Like top like our top ten games should have had like more weight than our last fifteen. No, uh, that's true, yeah. I like, try it Well, I think like Horizon uh, Assassin's Creed get the most technical votes. But if right. they were all like game fifteen or lower on our list, then what does it really matter? <laughs> right. Was I uh, you know, learning for next year, I guess. Yeah. But uh in uh, in in talking about bad DLC practices already, uh Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle is coming out May thirty first. And they are having 20 characters that are going to be DLC. Including Blake Belladonna of the RWBY anime. Uh, (laughs) 20 characters? Like, jeez, that's a lot of DLC characters. That's half your roster is DLC. Well, it depends on... uh... How much, like, if, it, if it's just a season pass, or if it's the game is going to be cheaper, and you can just buy, like, characters you want, like, individually, or, you know, stuff like that. Because I think about, uh, like, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, when that came out, like, years ago, like, there were, there were, like, eight, or, like, 10 downloadable characters that were already on the damn disc. You you just needed like a lot token. And it's like, fuck that. Yeah. I mean, you have to wonder though, if some of these do get automatically put on the disc because they were already announcing them this far out. So fortunately it's a blaze blue and no one cares about that franchise. So, (laughs) so you somehow always end up reviewing the game. No, I never reviewed a Blaze Blue game. I, I just do Guilty Gear. Oh, the I Guilty have, I get confused with both of them. I, so. I, I have a passing familiarity with Guilty Gear. Blaze Blue I know nothing about. Cause that's, that's, I mean, they made Blaze Blue because they couldn't make Guilty Gear for a little while. I mean, you know, if they have a story mode that's like an hour-long cutscene, then... Yeah. You know. like, no, thank you. <laughs> or just, this just one's also on. coming to the Switch, so that might help them. I know, it's also coming to PS4 and PC. There are people that really love the Blaze Blue, or Blaz Blue, I don't, I don't know. I uh, Blaze Blue. <laughs> whatever they want to call it. I swear the E was in there for one of the games. And then they took it out. I don't know. That's like, that's but, like how Namco always misspelled Soul Calibur. <laughs> yes, that too. <laughs> Or how Namco decided to change their name. Just randomly one day. Like, oh, now we're Bandai Namco, not Namco Bandai. Okay. Well, I mean, they cross. I think it's, that is Namco Bandai in Japan. That's why. I think I think it's like one, ki- one might have, like, gotten more of the company than the other one. So that's why they switched the names or something. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, it was a while ago too. <laughs> Long while ago, but uh, I remember yeah, I... when like uh, Square was like partnering up with EA. Yes, those that was were weird. dark times. Imagine if like EA had bought Square. <laughs> oh Lord, I don't want to imagine that. You would have. Uh, microtransactions and like every RPG. No, we wouldn't have any RPGs, that's the thing. <laughs> or or yeah, they'd all wind up like Mass Effect Andromeders. Yeah. Could you imagine what Final Fantasy would be like at this point? Wait, have John some... Madden as the final boss of the Final Fantasy, so that'd be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> They they just have an ultimate team, Final Fantasy. <laughs> so that in there. Uh so there's two new 
uh, there CES was during the week. Um, there was a lot of stuff talked about on CES that like you really don't need like eight thousand dollar toilets. Uh, but they did discuss two things that were, I guess, appropriate for for us. The HTC Vive Pro, uh, which is going to be the only VR you need if you can actually, number one, afford this thing, and number two... Get it to run. <laughs> yeah, get it to run. It's going to have its own wireless band. And uh, it's going to have a wireless adapter as well, so it can work with the Vive, the regular one. Uh, has active noise cancellation, front-facing cameras. I mean, this thing looks like it's going to be awesome. But And it'll only cost $900. Yeah, well, I mean, with the technology that's in that thing, it, it kind of should cost. Nine hundred dollars. Well, that's the thing. Like you're never gonna like most people are never gonna afford that. Right. Yeah. Let alone the computer to be able to run that thing. Yeah. Or you could be smarter and be Lenovo, and have the first VR headset for the Google Daydream, which is it's standalone as well. You don't need something to run it. Uh, it has a 110 degree field of view, 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's built off a Qualcomm Snapdragon. And that's cool. That's cool. You can just buy a VR headset. And uh, it does have a quick clickable trackpad. And you can have something that makes it work like a baseball bat as well. So I guess you have VR baseball. It would work on that. Sure. I don't like. I want to try VR out at some point. Just I don't know. I not paying an arm and a leg for it either. You know. Yeah, I mean, if I had the money to get a Vive, I'd probably get a Vive. Like of the three, like I don't want to get a like a Rift and PSVR seems kind of like a waste to me. Also, <laughs> it seems like the experiences in PSVR are good. But, you know, how many of them are really there? Yeah. I'd rather just have it like an open system than a closed one. <laughs> that's that's fair enough, I guess. I just like uh, having it on a system I already have, and I don't have to worry about, oh, well, this, I had to go pay for another computer yeah. to be able to use this. Then again, your computer's kind of shoddy right now, so it might help. Yeah, I mean, no, it's there's no way in hell it's running that, but, uh, you know, it works. It, yeah. I, it's, what, I got this in, it's about to be five years old, so it's getting around that time where I might have to <sighs> think about yeah. getting another one. So, did you know, well, we know, we Wait, talked you- about it. If you got two two big CES stories, I did. What is that? That Xbox Duke controller is supposed to be hitting in March. Oh Lord! For I think eighty bucks. I like the Duke. I had the Duke. I mean, it's I don't fine. like it. I don't like I don't like the white and black button placement, but it's a decent enough controller to me. Like it's too big, but yeah, for my hand, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's and like that stupid jewel thing is supposed to like play the Xbox startup video. Wait, what jewel thing? You know the jewel in the middle of the Duke? Like it has yeah, a, yeah. That's a, that's a video screen. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's cool. And also, I think well, which company was? Let me see. Uh, I think it's Retro. Yeah, Retro Bit announced all their I showed you this link about Bluetooth Dreamcast controllers. Yeah, that looks cool. And they're making Bluetooth uh, Genesis controllers also. And like they're making like new crap for old systems. Like it looks like they're making like some type of like wired Sega C D or Sega Sega Saturn pad. 
I think the thing I liked the most was that one you showed me where the they took the guts out of the SNES and then you put it into this clear box so you can see all of it. Oh, yeah, that's a different company, but yeah. yeah. Like, that looked cool. Like, if I could do that, I would. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You just have a clear version of it. You can see all the inside. Like That's, that's pretty neat. Yeah, clear cases are always cool. I love. I never loved having my uh, Atomic Game Boy Color and the Atomic 64 controller. Yep. It's cool. Well, I, had that, I had like the see-through Game Boy. Oh yeah, the purple one. Oh, it was. It was just. It was just clear, and it wasn't purple at all. Oh okay. I had the two purple. The purple one. The light purple ones where you could see through it. Yeah. Did you know that over 7,000 games released on Steam last year? Yeah, and only about <laughs> 70 of them are good. I, I mean, God, that is a lot of games. This is, Steam is about basically the iOS store for the PC at this well, point. That, that's the problem is you can never get, like, stuff goes by too quickly. That's why, like, PUBG is so amazing, because that game kind of grew out of nothing. Yeah, and it's going to become even more rare for games to stand out now on that thing, because you're having so many games. I mean, the last two years, you had, what, 4,000 and then 7, so 11,000 games came out in two years, just on Steam. Lord. Ah. Uh, I feel bad like for those like, developers. You like that what, Valkyria Chronicles? Not Valkyria Chronicles. What, Zine, uh, what RPG came out for the Switch like late last Sunblade year? Sunblade Chronicles, yeah. Yeah, thanks. If that game had come out, but had to contend with 7,000 like six, seven thousand more Switch titles, would that thing have stood out to you, honestly? <laughs> Probably. Like it might, not... it might have, but it would have been quickly forgotten about the next week when the new release was completely cycles out. <laughs> I mean, it's already getting crazy right now with the Switch where they get like 10 games every week. And you're yeah. sitting there going, okay. Other than the ones that I can obviously tell are like mobile ports and like games that are not going to be very good. Like, it's like, okay. That's a lot of games to come out. I don't know how many weeks last year towards the end there was like 20 games. 20 games are coming out this week. 20 games are coming out this week. Like, and like who 15, has time 15 to play all those? Well, yeah, 15 50... of them were all ports too. <laughs> like, good lord. Cycle it down. I mean, the the PS4, the PS Store has that same problem where there's games that come out and you're like, okay, that's there. Cool. But... They're not having 20 or 30 come out at once. Like, I think you got to do better about cycling that out. Uh, and now with that like Steam Direct thing, that's going to be even worse. Get ready for... Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they break the like 10,000 mark in one year. Yep, yeah, and it'll all, be ca- it'll be, I'll be flashlight apps just like on the 3DS. Yes. <laughs> so did you iPhone. watch any of the... Uh, Overwatch League? Hell no. I, I watch, like, games done quick a little. That's about it. <laughs> I'm glad they met their, like, 2.2 million goal on the yeah. games done quick. They had to make their Twitch subscriptions part of it to get that, but still cool. Uh, I watched some of it, too. It's amazing what those guys can do, really. Uh, but... I watched some of the Overwatch League. I felt like I was watching WWE in their shaky cam. Like I, I, for one, I won't like I never played it, but I'm sitting here just trying to fig, just watch it, and it's hard to watch because just stuff is happening constantly. They keep switching to another character. It's like that's how I felt about the city. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I feel like 
that's... I, mean, I, can, I can somewhat follow uh, that type of game, but the like, I, th- I think the core problem with like, that type of game, though, is, like, if there's, I think it's five on five or six on six, like, mm-hmm. who are you supposed to really focus on? I guess just the team in general? Like... Yeah, but you always have to expect anything from, one, like, one person. Like, it's not like right. a client. It's not like a God's eye view or, like, a, you know, sky view of, like, okay, this team is on this end, this team is on this end, let, let's go into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, say what you want about Heroes of the Storm or uh, Dota or, you know, like, even Hearthstone, like, those are really easy to capture in one camera. And you're not yeah. having to go from person to person to person. Like, I, I think it's a good idea that Blizzard's trying to market their esports and all that. But, yeah, I don't know. It, I guess it does appeal to, like, the Overwatch crowd and everything. Just, I wonder how much, how many, is this okay. really going to succeed and become a big deal, you know? Those people should go back to Team Fortress 2. A real game. What do you make of uh, the whole thing with not having a girl, a uh, female, on any of the teams? Or... Well, we all know girls can't play games, so. <clears throat> Mark no, being I mean, sarcastic. Yeah. If you uh, didn't get what he said. <laughs> it's, it's dumb, but it's that type of dumb Freddy team crap you always you always run into like the korean ones i can kind of understand because apparently it's like ta- almost taboo for like unmarried men and women to be in the same housing thing yeah and i get it that if it's like one woman and you're having practices for like 15 hours or whatever that maybe they feel like that environment would not be conducive to that but I don't know. I feel like you've got to give it a chance first. And if it doesn't work, then okay, you prove it didn't work. But you know, I, I I guess it's better than just oh, we're gonna have the token woman there or whatever. But I don't know. I also don't think that having a woman's league only league is probably the best answer for it either. Because no. then you're you might really have a problem with people watching it. Well, then you get some jackass guy like bitching about it. Oh well, that's gonna happen either way. But you know, ah, I just feel like it could have been handled better. But I guess this is the first time, so maybe next whatever if it's a two year deal, so. The next year they can figure this out. They did play a lot of matches. Like I said, I tried to watch some of it. Just I don't know. Maybe for the people that really get that game, they can understand it and it's fine. But I saw a lot of people saying this is kind of hard to follow, and they were big into the game. So yeah, glad to know I'm not uh, uh, the only one there. Black Widow's movie could be happening. Because uh, it now has a uh, writer. So, making people being optimistic about that movie, which I think is cool. If, I want to see a Black Widow movie. Well, you know, she always survives Avengers 4. <laughs> well, did, did we not think that she wasn't going to survive Avengers 4? Well, that's the whole thing about who's going to survive or who's going to kick the bucket. <laughs> we'll see. I, it would be good to have her be one of the – to, like, move it along after all that. If she's one of the ones to stick around, it's fine. Uh, like, I would say she deserves, she deserves her own movie. I mean, she's been in, I think, mo- most of them, except for, like, obviously, uh, Nick Fury. Right. Uh like drilling down, like more to her. I think drilling down, like more to her character, would be nice. Yeah. Because like in those movies, in, in, in the movies she's in, you don't like get her motivation that well. 
Right, yeah. She's part of the team. She's not the focus. So it, it would be a good idea just to have that out there and see. Just like the Black Panther movie, which is apparently doing very well. It's got their highest advanced sales since Captain America Civil War, which doesn't mean anything. I mean, advanced sales are advanced sales, and then if the movie's not good, you won't have a lot of sales after that, but are you interested in seeing this? The... Well, I'm, yeah, I, won't, I don't know if I'll see it opening day, but I'll probably see it like opening weekend with my friend. I'm the same way. I'm not saying I'm going to rush out, you know, Saturday morning and see it, but I'm interested just from, like, I, I think it's good that this movie's getting made and that he they went along enough to get his own. I think he does have an interesting story, the Black Panther. So sure. hopefully they do it justice in this uh, this movie. Unlike Gambit, which apparently is just never going to get made because the directors keep leaving. Yeah, <laughs> that's o- that's always a good sign of quality. <laughs> I mean, it is Gore Bravinsky, but still. I mean, Wait, that movie seems, I would say, needless and also lost. Especially with the uh, like, well, what do you do if the Disney thing goes through? Like, I could easily see Disney going, okay, nope, not happening. We're canning this, and then you you're working on it for nothing. Like, I couldn't. Cause I could see him. I mean, they're, they're gonna want they're gonna want to make their money as much as they can. So they'll make fucking movies about like the most like C list X Men ever. Like expect a beak movie at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't they gonna make that uh Kitty wasn't Kitty getting yeah. a solo movie? Yeah, that's another rumor it's supposed to make a Kitty Pride movie. Like, like yeah. okay. Let's just start making a solo movie for every X Men. I think that character has been portrayed by at least three different actresses in the X-Men movies. Mm-hmm. Like, why couldn't they stay with one act? That's Because Ellen Page wasn't old enough in 2000. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> On that one. Uh, but yeah, I still think this is like... I don't know how many times have we had to talk about a director leaving the Gambit movie. Like, just somebody stick with it at this point. Like, well, I think that character is hard because he's so wrapped up in that in Rogue, and they're obviously yeah. going to get Anna Paquin back. Uh, like, I think she's just too old for the movie. Who like, played for... her in the the other movies? Anna Paquin. I mean, that's her. She played him in the new X Men movies too. She wasn't in him. She was in the what, last one. She was in. Was oh, okay, uh, okay. So they the future past, which she got cut out of. <laughs> I only watched the first. Like whatever. Yeah, not, yeah, but she's not. She's actually not in them. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, they can recast Rogue. It's no big deal. I mean, actually, Shannon Tate is older than they had a back when. But, like, that character has been around for, like, so much longer. Like, that, right. that's why she seems older. Uh, but, like, I, don't, I just don't know where you go with that with that character or, like, what the story is, necessarily. Especially because you... Like, it's been a while since you're that X-Men movie, so... It's kind of just... It's really just standing alone with nothing. Yeah. Like, there's not nothing to tie it to. I just... Like, I think Deadpool largely worked because it was completely disconnected from X-Men. I mean, it had think... Colossus and the other chick in it, but they were, like, barely... Like, they were barely cameos, or, you know... They are kind of just jokes, not, like, actual characters. Right. Just... Yeah, that's the thing, though. Like, what you're saying, it's just, without the thing to attach it to, it just feels really weird to just, hey, this is the X-Men movie we're making. 
Okay. But on the okay. on the other hand, I think like I, that multiple man movie can work because I think that character can stand alone because he's he's not connected to X Men that well. Yeah. Uh, I just like I don't know. I just I wonder if, until kind of you know what Disney's gonna do is kind of just weird with you're you're I mean, picking I, it just feels like they're picking names out of a hat and going okay we're making a movie no well I think the Kitty Pride movie is that but I think Gambit's a that that's a safe choice because I mean he's probably the second or third most popular X-Men besides like obviously Wolverine yeah and yeah like Jean Grey and they Eh. I, I could see them making like a Professor X movie or something I mean, those that are might those work. X-Men, those are the new X-Men movies. Well, yeah, but basically. But still, like, I just... Did that Magneto movie ever... No. Did that come out? No, yeah, see? Like, that could... This game movie could just wind up like that, where we were supposed to make a Magneto movie, it didn't happen. Yeah, but look at all the past, or the failed Spider-Man movies Sony said they've been making. What is it? They have that one with, like, Black Cat and... Silver Sable, yeah. Yeah. That'll never happen. Or, like, their failed plans to get uh, Sinister Six off the ground. They've been talking about for years. Oh, God. I feel like we spent shows talking about that, and then, yeah. like, you heard nothing. It's like, okay, obviously, there's no plan here. But I mean, at least they're making that Venom movie, but I don't give a shit about that, so. I find that really hard for that to be a success, but, again, Sony just, they want to try to make something work with that franchise outside of Spider-Man, I get it, but, I don't know. I just, I hope that at some point Marvel just gets to have it back and they can do that justice outside of Spider-Man if they want to do that. Yeah. And I don't know. I think that Sony sold a bunch more PS4s. I'm sure all of y'all know that by now. <laughs> but uh, I think it's I I keep meaning to watch it, but I think it's cool that Runaways got a season two. So, that's sure. good. Hopefully, now that it did, they can finally say mutant with the one with the one character who is one. <laughs> yeah, you hope so. Anyway, they might not. They might hold off on on that because there's always a chance that a Disney deal doesn't go through. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and. I'm excited for this horror anthology series that Hulu's making because I really love the Masters of Horror. It's not going to be the same thing. But it feels like this is basically Hulu trying to do what Black Mirror is doing, uh, but with horror instead. Uh, and I, I, I like the idea of horror anthologies, but they never do particularly well. <laughs> like Masters of Horror lasted two years. I think Fear itself lasted not even one like, I mean, Tales from the Crypt lasted pretty long, but that was decades ago. And Master of Horror, like, the dip in quality from one to two was that, yeah, that drastic. Was problem. Yeah. Well, even, like, the episodes, like, I, I liked some episodes of Masters of Horror, but, like, some episodes just didn't work. It's like, I don't care mm. who's directing them. Like, we made a big deal about, oh, we got all these horror directors. It's like, I don't, I don't care about the directed writers first. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't matter how much spectacle you put in there if the stories suck then doesn't really matter yeah you know? I mean that's why I like Black Mirror so much is it's basically one guy who's been writing I mean there there were there's been a few guest writers but it's been one dude writing I think he's writ or co-wrote wrote or co-wrote 17 of the 19 episodes <laughs> wow so that show has some consistency <laughs> that's pretty great yeah all right, so I think the only thing that's 
left to talk about actual games that are coming out this week. Uh, the Inner Space, which is, I think, like the first sort of indie that's new that people are sort of talking about. That's like an exploration game uh, that you fly around. Uh, that Street Fighter V Arcade Edition is coming out. If you didn't buy Street Fighter V before, this might be the version to buy. Uh, Kerbal Space Program Enhanced Edition. That's a really good game, by the way. So if you didn't play that before, go ahead. Uh, Full Metal Furies is the next game from the Road Legacy developer. So that might be worth checking out. Uh, Darkest Dungeons coming to the Switch. Uh, on Thursday, uh, the Kirby Battle Royal comes out on Friday, along with Digimon uh, Story Cyber Sleuth Hacker's Memory, uh, Mutant Football League, the reimagining or whatever that is from EA, and uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter comes to the Xbox One. So, next week will be the big week for the games, uh, for the yeah. AAAs and all that, but... Yeah, decent week, starting to get finally into 2018, and that's what we'll be doing as well. The the Super Meat Boy review probably should be up sometime on Monday, and then we'll see what happens there. Uh, You can check out our gameplay videos on on the W2 Network YouTube channel or on Mark's YouTube channel. Is that just Humanity Plague there too, or... Uh, I think it's a Lurka. I'm not quite sure. It's one of the two. Uh, also check I, out I uh, Stephanie uh, over there on uh, Saki Sakura. She did one where she played with us. And then she's been playing pretty regularly with uh, uh, some friends of hers as well, if you want to check out uh, gameplay there. But of, uh, of the city of Final Fantasy NT. And yeah, again, if you haven't checked out the beta for that, go download it. They get a character swap on some point on Monday. And then that lasts all the way till the 21st. So that beta is going to be going on for a while. And then you can, the game will be out on the 30th. So don't have to wait uh, too long for that. But all right, until next week, we will uh, see you later, everybody. Later. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.